Today we are talking about grief carriers. We're gonna turn into 1 Thessalonians 4. And this says, brothers and sisters, we tell you of these people who have died so you do not mourn like the others without hope. We are going to be talking about how grief carries on us and keeps it from the mantle of God resting upon you because there is no room grief has attached itself to you and you cannot move forward you cannot grow into the new things that's what we're going to be speaking about today and if you go ahead and look into romans um, 8 and 18 it says for i consider the suffering of this present time not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. God is trying to tell you that there is something that is bigger, that is greater than what we have here on earth. And there is a reason why we are still here on earth. We have to get back to what it is that we are called to do here in picking up a mantle. Uh, if you turn into uh, Second Kings, Two, and if you go and start into nine, it talks about how Elijah is catching the mantle of Elijah. This is the story we've gone through in our other Bible studies, but let's go ahead and let's turn to it really quick. Um, and it talks about how he rolls up his mantle, he smacks it upon the water, and Elijah has the water shift to the left and to the right, and they walk upon the dry land over, and this is the Jordan where they're at. It says, Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall so be for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued and talked and suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he went back and stood on the banks of the Jordan. So he's tearing his clothes, he's renting them. That is a sign of mourning, um, and he's taking up another mantle. So we have read about this when we uh, see where Christ is put on the cross as the last high priest, how um, Caiaphas tore his robe, he rented, and then he denounced himself as a high priest because you are not to tear the cloth. It was actually, um, it was sewn so well at the collar as one piece, it would be very hard to tear. Uh, and he said he went ahead and took that because the blasphemy, because it was the silliness of how he thought uh, Jesus was being saying that he was a God, uh, that he was God's son, that he was going to be, um, you know, put into that place of high priesthood. He went and ripped his clothes. He lost his, he, he gave up his title as high priest at that point in time. And what happens next is the soldiers jokingly put the, the robe on Christ. They make him the high priest jokingly. Well, it wasn't a joke. He still reigns as that final last high priest, high priest in that um, line of Melchizedek under the house of David, under the, the root and the offspring of David. So we are seeing here that he rips his clothes. He gets the mantle of Elijah um, and Elisha has taken the mantle with the double portion upon it. So there is a time of mourning and there's a time of picking up a mantle and putting that on. See, when vision, is, when vision is taken from you or when it's withheld or if it is covered, we suffocate. So where there's no, where there's no vision, there is suffocation. Um, and one um, study that I was learning that from was from Kim Clement. He's wonderful. Um, he's gone to, to go on to be uh, with the Lord. But he, if you go back and listen to his teachings, uh, he is a wonderful prophet. 
um, you can go ahead and look him up. Uh, but he talks about how vision is suffocated. Um, and that is if you are not moving in that call and in that mantle. So we cannot be grief carriers. We cannot um, go back to the old. We cannot turn back uh, to look to the old. Uh, we see in the story where the men, the 50 men that were there, the sons of the prophets in Second Kings said that where is Elijah? Where is your master? Let us go and look for him. And Elisha said, do not go and look for him. He knew he had went on and he went to be the Lord. He's seen the chariot of fire come and take his master away. And they continued, scripture says that they continued and they continued until there was a shame actually put on um, Elisha. So he just said, go, go, go ahead, go look for him. And they looked for three days and could not find Elijah because he was in the presence of the Lord. And he said, did I not tell you that he would not be there? Um, so we can't go back looking for the old. There is a new thing in front of you. So if we are looking back into the old, you are not moving forward. You become digressing. You become stepping back. You are in holding, you're in a holding position. You're in a holding pattern. Uh, so when we hold grief, we are looking for the old. We are not moving forward to the new thing. And on 7 12 22 um, was my dad, Pastor Bishop Martinez's birthday. And on that day, I heard a word from the Lord talking to me about habitation, a divine habitation, and about the revival. When we, when I always thought, you know, we would be doing like revival tents, right? It was always a vision I've had and dreams I would have of being in a desert land or being in a dry land and having these great revivals, but God stopped me and said, it's not revival, it's habitation. It's building a habitation where God can come. His presence can come in those tents and those meetings, and it's for a divine habitation. It's for something that is new. It's a way that you have not been before. And we've heard that said by our Bishop Brady who came to town a few weeks ago. We heard, just heard that said last night by Apostle Leon Walters. Um, it keeps getting put into my spirit and said again and again, Prophetess Janet German, um, the, all the mighty people that I listen to and watch, especially online, um, have said that you are going into a new thing. This is a new way that you have never been before. Um, so in that newness, you know, it's a time to be watchful. Uh, if we have that sorrow, if we have that grief on our backs, there is no room for the mantle to rest. And we have to have room for that mantle. We have to pick up that mantle because it is for the earth realm. There is something that we are here on earth to do so we if we are not picking up that mantle um then we are not doing what we're supposed to be doing here on earth that this is a command of the lord to go out and talk about him to go out and preach the good news it is for everybody it is a commandment to go out and do that you know we want to be a light uh, we don't want to be Christians that take the word and sit with it we don't want to be those Christians that hide their light upon the hill um, so I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about how things need to change um, in our thinking because we're going into a new place. We're going into a new land. So it says three things that need to change are thinking and expectations and the vision. You have to look and actually see an image of the vision of that you have. Um, and sometimes it even helps to print it out or to have it um, in your phone where you can actually see a vision of what it is uh, because if there is no... Uh, picture of it in your mind, then there is nothing to meet up to. There's nothing to be ready to expect to get. So you want to create that vision in your mind. Um, so in, in my mind, I would uh, print out a picture. Or I'd put a picture in my phone um, of the tents that I see in the dry land and the desert land uh, with the mountains there and with the people coming from different uh, places. It may be something with nothing, but you take everything out and you're creating 
um, a place of habitation uh, where God can bring in and have an experience because um, PlayStation cannot be more powerful for the generation. PlayStation can't have more of an experience than God. This generation needs to see a sign. They need to feel the presence. They need to, to they be able to experience God for themselves, uh, to pick it up and to carry it. Um, it's not it's not going to be um, just watching parents do something, be able to pick up after them and just go with that with th that type of uh, faith that we have in the generation. The more so that I'm in, I'm in my 40s. So um, you know, so we kind of see that. Now the newer generation is needing these experiences. Everything is, you know, 4D and 3D and um, there's so much, there's sound and there's senses and they want to throw in smells. That's why uh, when I worked at Disneyland and we did like the ride stuff, they put scents and stuff in, into the atmosphere uh, to give you this whole sense of a thing. And, you know, that's why the, um, that's why with the Holy Land oils and with the anointing oils that I make, the scents are so very important because it holds the heart of God and the scent of the oil, the things that he would have in his first and second temple. There is a reason for them. There's a reason for every oil, why they are mixed a certain way that they're, they are mixed. Um, it, this actually helps us into the spiritual realm. It helps our mind to enter in with Christ, um, to be able to get into the presence of worship. Um, it just, it helps the body to align to be balanced. Um, so there's so much to smell. And in scripture, it says that there is the scent of us on the coat of God. On Jesus's coat is that scent. And um, some scripture, you will find it as a cinnamon or as a sandalwood uh, type scent. It's a little bit in this, like in the same family when it comes to um, the, the type of smell and spice that it is. So uh, the cinnamon and the, is is soaked into the robe of Christ. And when Christ passes his father, he is reminded that we are covered in his anointing. We are covered by his blood. When he went on that cross for us and he shed his blood and his clothes were ripped and there was other, and that robe was put on him as a joke that he was being clothed in the essence of his people, that he would smell it and remember why he was doing everything that when the Lord uh, when our father in heaven would smell his son he would remember that we are covered in the blood of Jesus so there is something behind the sense of the oil why it is so important and you know um, and different types of cinnamon and casa those are two different things some people want to say they're the same that no they're not there's two different forms of that um, with two different reasons in temple use if you look at the incense for the temple. So there's something that is in um, the sense that is so important that is in the smells and that's part of the experiences of God as we uh, begin to use like fog and lighting like in worship. Some say, some say you know, oh, that's silly. Um, you know, we're not here to put on a show, but in certain generations, it's needed. It's needed to fill an atmosphere to help uh, for the people to, to draw closer to God. There is so much distraction um, in the world right now. You got to pull them out of their phones and into the presence of God and into the service. So that's why God is showing me this new uh, divine habitation, not revival. Revival means to go back and to revive it's it's you're going back you're going back to pick it up and to refresh it um, and that's not what we want to do we, we're not wanting we're not trying to go back and to revive we just want to bring the presence of God where he can meet his people we just want them to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the Lord and creating that atmosphere um, so that's a little bit of the difference the the revival it happens regardless whether you know you were with God you're on the fence you're you're warm you're you're lukewarm whatever you are uh, or if you don't know God it all doesn't matter all, it doesn't matter because when you're there in the presence of God it's the presence of God that's it so when you create that atmosphere of worship um, you know and and that's one thing that had happened when I was at 
church service a few months ago, um, we were singing a song at church and I seen my dad um, dancing in the suit that he's in right now behind in the picture that he wore that one Easter service. Um, I seen him dancing in that suit, going around in a circle, clapping how he would do, praising God when I was in the house of God, praising God during praise and worship. I had an encounter with my father. So when we enter into the presence of God, we can see our loved ones. You know, you're, you're there, they, they might, God might just give you that interaction where you can see them and have that moment um, because you are in the presence of God. And that's where they are right now. If they knew God, if they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, not if they're a good person, if they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, um, that's where they are. They're, they are in the presence of the Lord um, and they are with our Father in heaven and they are rejoicing and they're in their place that was set before them. Um, and we, you all have a place, you have a place that God has set for you that he is up there making your room up now. Um, you know, he's up there making your crown now. He's up there um, and he, he knows what is for you uh, when you get out of this earthly body. And when God begins to show you what's going on in the spiritual realm, it's a lot easier, you know, because you because you can see and you know, and you're understanding the time frame on earth and you're understanding it. Yeah, sometimes it feels long to us, but it's a very short. It's a very short to how long eternity is. Eternity is so long. It's forever. It goes on and on and on. So this little bit of time on earth is so very small. It's, and, and he will give you little understandings of that. And the wisdom that he gives us to let go of grief, you understand a little bit more of the spiritual realm. There is a spiritual closeness where you can feel the presence of your loved ones. Uh, you can feel the presence of God. You can hear God's voice. Um, you know, it's not, it's not big. It's not scary. It's usually small. It usually sounds like you, but you know, it's not you real hard to explain. Sometimes you sound crazy. Get it. Got it. I understand. But until you see it for yourself, until you, it, you experience it for yourself, um, you know, it, it, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to describe, but once you experience it, you will understand yeah, I understand. I miss my dad. Yeah, I understand. I miss my grandma. I miss my cousin. I, I lost so many people in this last few months. I'm losing a lot of people, but there's so much work to be done here. So one thing that I do to take the grief off is just think of today. And the Bible says, you know, think about today. Let tomorrow take care of itself. It will have its own own worries. And I try to think about just today. If I can, if I'm getting through today, okay. And I understand where everyone's at and I understand I'll see them soon. And I understand I'm still here with the purpose. Then it's easier to get through my day because I'm just thinking about today. If I start thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm never going to see them again. And when we start doing that, I'm never going to see them again. That's when that grief starts to tear into our backs it starts to attach latch on and it and it rides you and uh, i know there was a book a long time ago that i spoke to you guys about some of you that have um, been with me a long time with the studies will know um that there that I, I was talking about this book where these demons would latch onto our backs and write us around in the spiritual realm we could see them but they were there you know whatever it, whatever these demons were if there were anger or um you know addiction or whatever whatever things that are there um it was latched on it was carrying us and um, making you, you know, feel bad about yourself, or making you feel um, have things in your in your um, like uh, I wanted to I kind of want to say like uh, eating problems, how it would just attach itself to you. You can never let go of it because that that's always there. That it, it clings on to you and it rides you like a horse, like an animal. And that book was so good. I wish I could. I can't remember the name right this second, um, but I can definitely put it in the messages later 
after I uh, record this and post this. Um, and then if I don't, if I forget, just remind me you guys and we can put it on there. But there is um, things that attach themselves onto us and that is like a form of grief and grief will do that and it will make you feel sorry for yourself and it will suffocate you and it will suffocate your vision and it will keep you from doing the things that you need to do and picking up your mantle or having a place for it to rest. And you know, if you look into Psalms 23 where they always use this at every single few uh they say that you know he makes me lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul and you know that it that scripture should not be used in at all when it comes to funerals that is the scripture that's going to help you get through your time here on earth he's giving you rest so you are ready for the battle he's giving you he's making you lie down to get closer to him to eat of the fattiness that he has for you in the land for your journey for what you have to do when you're here uh you know and then when they talk in revelation 7 they begin to talk about there, that there's a wiping of tears and there's no more sorrow and hey that ain't now that ain't now, that's later. That's after uh, the final day. That's after we are in that courtship of that final wedding. When we're sitting with Christ and we're sitting with our Father and the Holy Spirit and we're having that glorious wedding on that final eighth day, that's when there is no more sorrow, there is no more tears, that none of that stuff is there. Right now there is a spiritual battle going on. So. And, you know, there, there is still all this stuff going on in the spiritual realm. There is not rest right now. There is not wiping of the tears right now. Uh, this is a time of battle. The, the fight is still on. But yes, there is a time for the wiping of the tears. Uh, you know, so I would, I would rather, you know, you go to, you know, Romans 8.18. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. That there is suffering. There is suffering until there is no more suffering. Until everything is, is completed and we are in that eternity with Christ on that eighth day. And everything has been completed. Jesus has already came to the earth. He has conquered. Um, and then... We sit at the feast and we have no more tears. We have no more sorrow. We are all uh, together for those who are in the Lamb's book of life. And today is your book. Is your name in that book? Are you in the Lamb's book of life? Uh, so we want to make sure that you do that prayer today. Just ask Jesus to come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior, Father God. Forgive me of my sins. Help me with any of the things that I have going on in my life. Make me a clean vessel and show me, show me, Father God, what I need to do to change those things. That I might have a renewed mind. That I will have the newness. I'm, re I'm getting ready to step into the new things. And to help me in that journey. To step and, and, and be able to step on that dry land and to bring your water. And that's what we could do with that mantle. Just like Elijah rolled up that mantle, he, he, he slapped the water and, he, and it separated. So there is a command of the water when you are in the anointing of God, when you are flowing in the presence of God, the water will follow you. That is part of your birthright is being the child of God you call upon him and he comes. The Holy Spirit is with us. That's why when God left, he said, I am sending another to take my place. So you wait here. And the disciples waited. He, they waited for the Holy Spirit to come because they couldn't do it without him. They can't, they can't do it without the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will bring that water to those dry lands. So it is, it is time for those, those habitations of God to be built in those dry lands with the hungry hearts that God has set forth for this generation. And it won't be as hard as we think it, won't, it, it will be. It won't be as hard as, as it had been in the past to reach those because the ones that you would never think would come in will begin to come in. Because uh, there's going to be a bit, the big divide, the big separation of, of um, secular and Christianity. It's got to be a big deal. You know, it's got to be a, a big separation where you got to pick a side. So all that kind of stuff will start to be happening. You'll start to see that more um, as we're getting into those days that we're into. To now to understand that mantle of God. 
um, grief hurts, grief carries. We have to speak to God about how to take off that grief so we can put on the mantle. And um, making a place for that mantle um, is gonna be most most important, is making a place for the mantle. Um, but for today, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stop right there. Know that you are important, that you were created for such a time as this there is purpose for you. If there is no vision, ask God to give it to you. Print it out, post it, do whatever you got to do with it. Make it clear, make it plain, um, and have it. And, and do not be um, the one that sits and does not know that they have a vision, that they have a mantle, that there's something that they need to carry in the spiritual realm to get these other things off of their back, to get the claws of the enemy out of your back so you can carry what God has fallen, has let fall for you to catch so it does not fall into the floor, does not suffocate another we don't want to suffocate the others. We want to help the others. We want to be there to be on their left and on their right and help them to do the work of the Lord. But that's what we have for today. Thank you so much for joining. And remember to dive deep into the things of God.